Oh no. One of those things to consider is light. Excuse me. Okay. This is gonna, oh no. Oh God. Oh no. What's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Are you good? I hope you're good. I'm doing great. Beautiful day, busy week, but a lot of fun stuff and a lot of fun developments happened. So, should be a good video. Now, I realize I haven't explained these videos in a bit, and there are a lot of new subscribers over the past month or two, so, the twig, this week in gardening, that's basically just what it is. I video things throughout the week, I vlog throughout the week, and I put them together in one usually ridiculously long video that has no consistency, but sometimes it's a lot of fun, and uh, that's, that's what it is. I also usually forget to film my intro at the beginning of the week and do it at the end of the week, which is what I'm doing right now, and that's why I'm hiding in the bushes so you can't see what's going to happen in the rest of the video. Welcome to the channel. Ugh. Squirrels chewing up my whatever this rubber thing is. What is that called? I'm gonna have to figure it out to fix it. Two quick things I wanted to talk about before we get into the video. A few people asked me about my cat and why I don't do more videos. Pumpkin is her name. She, um, she has her own channel. Pumpkinbutt777. There's no P in there. It's just P-U-M-K-I-N because the other name was taken. I don't upload to it very often anymore, but there are lots and lots of videos on there. If you want to check them out, I will try and incorporate my pets more into my Saturday videos, perhaps, into the vlogs. Uh, but, you know, if you need, you need to get your fix of my cat, then that's her channel. And the other thing, I filmed my orchid tag, which I think is how this video, this vlog starts. Uh, I didn't know at the time Blanca had already been tagged, but hey, that's okay. That's just, Blanca just has so much love. That's all right. No big deal. Looking forward to seeing her orchid tag video, and I really appreciate everybody's comments. That was a fun video to make. All right, that was a nice two-minute long introduction. Let's go ahead and get into things. Here we go. Done. I have spent so much time working on this orchid tag video. Not the editing itself, though that that did take a long time. There were some technical issues with the computer. But filming the video, I originally filmed it in 4K, and the camera kept turning off and I didn't know it. So I reshot it twice and realized it was overheating because it was hot outside and extra hot in here. So I went ahead and just refilmed it at 60 frames per second, although I meant to have it set at 30. It's a whole long, boring story. But I got it done. It just, it took, you know, two batteries and about 55, 44, no, it was 44 gigs of memory. So <laughs> glad that's over, but it was fun. But today, uh, I can actually get some stuff done. I've been editing for the past three days, so I haven't gotten a lot done out here. Everything needs to be watered, so I'm trying to warm things up, because when I came out this morning, it was only 62 in here, which is fine. I turned the heaters down at nighttime, because I like for them to have the day and night temperature shift. So things are still warming up in here. If I can get it warm enough, then I'm going to water the Vandas still have some green on their roots, so they're okay for a few more hours at least, and then I'll go ahead and dunk them back down and soak them. But uh, I really need to go ahead and move the aquaponics stuff back in here, so I need to get the waterfall filter put back in, grab the fish. Acclimating the fish is going to take a long time because the temperature's dropped again, which they're going to do. It's fall, so that's okay. It's just going to take a while because it's going to be a huge huge temperature shift for the fish, which is not good for them. So that's going to take a while. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that, which I'm pretty excited about. And I noticed while I was filming the orchid tag, I've got another spike coming up on the zygopetalum. That would be spike number four. So she's pretty happy and I'm happy about that. I'm also happy. Oh, I love this. I can peel you off, I think. Are you ready to go? Oh yeah, you're ready to go. Come on off of there. Ah, it's one of my favorite things to do. Because every time you get a new ring, it's, you know, a whole nother set of growth. The trunks look even cooler. That's exciting. Looks like this one's going to be ready to go fairly soon, too. And this is another reason it's been such a busy week. 
This guy got an abscess on his ear out of nowhere, so he's been to the vet a few times, getting that treated, and uh, he's got to come. Are you able to get your food out, Toby? You making it work? Yeah, he's fine though. Don't worry, healing very well. Someone doesn't like to eat out of a bowl. You have to hand feed her every single morning. It's the things we do for our pets. You done? You done? Was that good? Was that so good? Was that so good? Was that so good? Okay. All right. You want to go? Up? Oh, wait. We forgot. Where's your brother? Where's your brother? There you go. All done? Yeah. Uh, excuse you. Look at what you're doing to the cabinets. So gross. Okay, so before I get to do anything, I have to go clean poop off my cabinet. That's fun. Like, I got nothing better to do than to scrub poop off the wall. Done with that. All right. Ow! Oh! That's fun. That's, that's nice. That's real nice. Oh, good, you're back up there? That's, that's great. Hey, I found my missing cable ties. Been looking everywhere for those. And some, uh, Skeeter beater? I don't know what that's from, but that's good. But, don't need that right now. To say though, really happy I found those. I need to get the dolly out. Let's go catch some fish. It's about 44 degrees outside. I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt. My neighbors are gonna think I'm crazy, but that's fine. They're kind of right. All right, okay, okay. That's, that's dramatic. Yeah, I know, I got the gate open. Better stay there. I also think I need to stick the hose in the pool. Air's been very dry, so water level's getting low. Need to clean the leaves out, too. It's gonna be a fun day. All right, so I've got this. Dumping the water out of the pond. And lower the water level as much as I can. I mean, this fly trap is probably, I was gonna say it's probably ready to put into dormancy, but it's got some new growth on it, so not yet, but soon. And then I'm not going to really clean the filter pads out too much, but uh, I wanna make sure the gunk is out of everything, so I'm gonna do this for a little bit and then flip the filter pads upside down to back flush them out. All right, that's all drained down. I went ahead and I started pulling some of the snails out. It looks like the koi kind of had their way with most of the snails, so don't think any of them are alive, but any of them that's had an operculum on them, I went ahead and pulled them out anyway, so I'm a little bit concerned because I had some pretty big koi in here. And it's possible they're all hiding under there. I just can't imagine they would fit, but fingers crossed. We will see when I go ahead and pull this out. Oh, and the camellias just had a nice drink of fish water. They're starting to butt out. Some little pink spots showing up in there. Let's see what's under here. I can do this with one hand. I don't think I can. They're all hiding. Okay, that's a relief. Big guys are still around, so... Gonna catch these guys and start acclimating them. And it's gonna take a long time to acclimate them because this water is frigid. So while they're acclimating, I'll do all the other cleaning, cleaning and prep type thing. All the junk that came out of there, all that was down here inside this impeller. Nasty. Right, so I can finally go ahead and get this guy set up. It's going on this shelf here. Just like so. Yep. Just like that. That'll do. That'll do just fine. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and put this in here. Probably cut up a fresh carbon pad to put on that as well. Oh, the biomedia. That's in here. Now, I didn't want to rinse that with tap water. That white sponge that's in there also has a vast colony of bacteria on it, but... It was filthy, so I had to rinse it with the hose. I needed a lot of pressure. Uh, but this, there's, this is the main source of bio, biofiltration that is. So to rinse that, just going to keep it in here and use this water from the pond. It's been dechlorinated. Oh, 
there's a crack in this one. Good to know. Actually, I mean, it does kind of work out well. There we go. And yeah, I'm just going to keep on doing that until the water runs clear. Ugh. The hose popped off. And I don't know if you remember when I did the video where I put the silter together, but this hose does not fit that adapter very well. So it took about 25 minutes, but I got it back on there, and this time I used a screw-on clamp. I tried the pinch clamp, and it wasn't pinching, and I forgot to take it off, and now that's where it lives now, because I'm not, I've never taken that hose off of there ever, ever again. Hell no. But now that's done. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Let's see. I heard something, and then it stopped. Why did it stop? Why, oh, there we go. I tried to get the sticker off of there, but it just, it wasn't budging, so it's fine. That looks fine. All right, I'm glad I cleaned that pump out because the flow was really not good. Like this was trickling, so that's cleaned out now. Filter pads are clean. It's amazing, as soon as I turned this on, I started seeing some of the koi come out. They don't like quiet. I've barely seen them since I put them in here. Now the other koi should almost be done acclimating. I'm probably gonna give it another 40 minutes or so. I have to keep swapping the water though because there's issues with ammonia buildup, so almost done. But really glad to have that done. So uh, it occurred to me as I was editing this that, hold on, is this too loud? I feel like this is too loud. That's better. I really didn't give any backstory or explanation as to what's going on here, and anybody who is maybe new to the channel is probably saying, what what the heck is going on? So, uh, several weeks ago, I got this set up in here, and I moved a few of the fish in with it with an extra filter. The small filter right here had been in the aquaponics tub that's outside. By doing this, I was able to keep the biological filtration going in here so that when I introduce the rest of them, it's somewhat already cycled. And I also realized, while I was filming this, that I didn't explain cycling. I kept saying biological and bioload and all these things, and if you don't know fish, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. This bag back here, the bag that I was cleaning out and dumping the bucket of water over, this has biological media in it. There's three different types of filter media. The basic, which is mechanical, chemical, and biological. Mechanical filtration would be like that white pad that was in there. It's a dense material to catch debris. Kind of like this net, what I just did when I scooped out those little chunks of root. Little pieces that are in there. It's mechanical. Chemical filtration is carbon, and uh, that has very tiny pores in it that when things pass through it, it traps them, it removes impurities, and there's lots of forms of chemical filtration. All different types, not just carbon. Biological, it's like the life source of your water. I'm going to attempt to get, I have, nope, have to set this down, I'll fall in. There we go. You guys see what I'm doing right now? Some of that, some of this. Okay. All right. Okay. So here's the biological media. This is a type of stone. It's made by Seachem. It's called their pond matrix. It's very porous. And then, oh, there's a piece of orchid bark in there. That's that orchid life when you're always finding bark everywhere except for in your orchid pots. And then this right here, which is like an eco biostone, I think is what it's called. These have a lot of surface area, meaning they're very porous. There's lots of channels that water can move through. And most importantly, that bacteria can colonize on. And when the bacteria colonizes on here, it's good bacteria. Beneficial bacteria, nitrifying bacteria is actually what it's called. And it is what supports the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen cycle being the fish produce waste, being ammonia, urea. And uh, nitrifying bacteria, nitrosomus, they break that down into byproducts. NO3, NO4, and PO4. And there's other stuff in there too. It gets kind of complicated. But what happens is that that ammonia gets broken down and turned into nitrite. Ammonia and nitrite are very toxic to fish. That's why it's important to have this water colonized before I move the fish into it. So that they're not dealing with that toxicity. That there's enough bacteria in here to process and turn it into nitrate. Nitrate is less toxic. Though in high levels it is it is dangerous. And then in nature, in something, some kind of exchange between the water and the atmosphere, nitrate can dissipate out and go away. In 
aquariums and ponds and whatnot, you have to remove it physically. You have to dilute the water through water changes. And then from all this, there's also phosphate. Now, nitrate and phosphate probably sound familiar to my fellow plant geeks out there. These are things that are in our fertilizers, hence the pond. This is what I water my plants with so they can get that nitrate and that phosphate. And it's a lot more than that. There's a lot of other good things in here. I do add calcium and magnesium and um, iodide to the water. And these stones right here, these eco stones are supposed to release a lot of calcium. I need to test the water. I need to give it a few more days first. But basically, that's that's what that's all about. Trying to maintain the biological filtration in here. Okay, that's all. Let me get back to this now. All right, so everybody is in except for the long fins. I had to divide these up into four different totes because there were so many fish and there's ammonia buildup. This is about a four and a half, five hour process because I had to acclimate them. It was a 15 degree difference. And as I've been putting them back, I have been making sure to, you know, it's a good opportunity to go ahead and give them an overall health check, make sure their gills are clear, not seeing any spots on anybody. You know, just an external check that is. Now I can go ahead and put these guys in. The temperatures are matched. Everything else seems to be good. I drip acclimated them. Um, and then I did some mild water exchanges as well because uh, I didn't want ammonia to build up too much. Done. I'm pretty sure all those snails are toast, but I'll give them a little bit. I don't know how much noise that's making in person. It's very quiet and I can barely hear it, but, you know, camera mics pick up. Very subtle sound, so if it's loud and obnoxious, I won't know until I edit this, and at that point it's going to be too late, so I apologize. But if I notice it's loud, then I'm going to figure something out. I can just unplug it. The problem with unplugging it is there will be a backflow, so when I unplug it, the water's going to flow back through the filter, into the hose, and down out the pump, and all the gunk's going to disperse back into the pond. So I'll need to install a valve there on that hose before I can do any of that. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Remember I told you the beta was in here? This is Gloria. Uh, I pulled her out because the fish were chasing her, so she's gonna go back into her tank here in a little bit. That's not where she's staying. I just scooped her out and put her in the cup. I'm gonna take her inside here in just a minute. Yeah, I swear, she's not staying in there. Nobody, nobody give me crap for that. All right, it's like everybody's eating and having a good time. I'm so relieved. I was worried that was gonna be way too much of a temperature change, uh, but they're good. They're eating. Everything seems all right. Oh, so pretty. Look at all those pretty hibiscus flowers. Got some leaves yellowing and dropping off. That's okay. Totally normal. Happens every year when I bring them in. They drop some leaves and I cut them back. Not a big deal. I'm getting really sick of this. So I'm going to try and handle this today as much as I can because the forecast just changed from it being like 33 tonight to 22 which means there's an awful lot of stuff I need to do out there so uh, I may just have to deal with this for another day uh, I'm trying to keep the cymbidiums near the door because I've been moving them out during the day because you know 50 degrees and really sunny they love that but the hibiscus these are some of the ones from Hidden Valley hibiscus I need to go ahead and put them away and find their proper place and then I need to bring in the pots the Mexican pottery that's not supposed to be outside when it's too cold I think I'll bring in the sago palm and the Washingtonian and all that fun stuff but first I need to go get mulch so I need to go get like another 20 bags because a 22 degree chill should go ahead and kill off the rest of the bananas. So kill off, I mean like kill off the foliage above ground. Their roots will be fine. But that means that, that I'll be able to go ahead and mulch soon. So um, uh, I'm going to go go to Lowe's. There's 15. These are all broken. So I had to dig through the entire pallet to find bags that weren't broken. And I found a frog friend. He's pretty cute, half huh, frog friend. I'm at Home Depot now, because I was only able to get 18 bags that weren't falling apart out of that huge pallet. So I'm gonna see if I can't get another dozen bags or so, but look what I got at Lowe's. Look at, isn't that cool? This is Echeveria Topsy Turvy. It's got neat folded leaves. They're kind of, some. they look like a uh, hot dog buns. Yeah, we'll go with that, but it's pretty cool, isn't it? Especially more so from the top. They kind of look almost like a kill lilies. Cool. Also, there may or may not be a tree frog in one of those light boxes. There is. He's in there. Because uh, we're in a bit of a concrete jungle here. There's a wetland, of a fake wetland, behind everything. It's supposed to be a nature preserve, but they went through and cut all the cattails down. So I'm guessing that's why he is here at Lowe's. So 
I'm gonna let him go on the other side of the wetland where the real wetland, it's a long story, but I'm not keeping him, I'm just taking him back to nature where he can actually hibernate and not die tonight when it's freezing cold outside, although he probably wouldn't die, but he was still pretty active. Anybody need a Christmas dragon? Watch this, watch this. Just wait. Oh! <laughs> Cute and slightly terrifying. Nope. Damn. Martha didn't come to play this year. Holy crap. She's everywhere. No mulch. But I was able to get the rest of the pots I need to fill up my orchid stand, so that's great. So I can get the rest of my orchids moved. And the cashier miscounted. She only charged me for 10. I got 11 pots. And, she, you know, I told her, and she goes, oh, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. You're in here all the time. And I was like, no, 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 no. You, that's, I worked retail for a very long time. You would be fired for that. And um, on my end, that's stealing. So let's go ahead and pay for that pot. People baffle me sometimes. Got that unloaded. I love this cart. Oh, don't want to forget about the broken bag. Yeah, one of the bags broke on the way home. That... That barely fit through there. Uh -huh, I pulled that one off. Okay, done with that. But now, gotta go to different loads and see if I can't find another maybe 18 or 20 bags. Crap, I forgot a frog. That's okay though, cause I know a good spot in my yard where the gray tree frogs hang out. I can let them go there. Whoops. And also we can talk about them a little bit. That'll be fun. Here, oh, people. I don't want All right, so I'm home. I picked up the other 20 bags of mulch. Now I need to let the tree frog go. These guys, I have them in my backyard, so he'll be fine. There's an area where they like to hang out. Hey bud, how you doing? I did get kind of attached to him fairly quick. His name's Gaspacho. Come on bud. Okay. There we go. This is the gray tree frog. Latin name, Hyla versicolor. I could be pronouncing that wrong. They're common in the eastern, southeastern United States. I think you can find them in Oklahoma and Oklahoma. I think you can find them in Oklahoma and Texas as well. Up into Canada. They hang out in the trees. Sometimes the blades of the cattails when they're breeding. That's where I'm figuring he came from. Because I mentioned that there's a wetland. Or a fake wetland right behind where I found him. So... He may have been in there, or maybe came from the woods, but the woods are pretty far away. The only reason I grabbed him is because that area where I was is a concrete desert. So it would have been really tricky for him to find his way back to some soil to hibernate. And I'm, again, I think I mentioned before, I'm not keeping them. They're native, so that's illegal in Missouri. I think it's just kind of mean to take the animals out of the wild. Oh, gazpacho. I think he's enjoying the warmth of my body. I would be too. It's kind of chilly out here. Yep. Okay. Alright, well. Time for you to be free. And go hang out with your other tree frog friends, okay? Oh. Oh! Alright. Well. <laughs> he took matters into his own hands. There he is. He's down there. See you later, gazpacho. Alright, so that concludes today's herpetology lesson. I've gone ahead and gathered up the rest of the plants that I think I need to move in tonight. The mule palms? I mean, I could probably leave them out. It's going to get down to 22. It's only going to be below 30 for about five or six hours. But honestly, they're looking so good. And these things at this size would be so expensive to replace and hard to find at this size too, especially up here in St. Louis. So I'm not going to risk it. I'm just going to go ahead and pull them in tonight. And I'll bring them back out, because you know, these could stay out for a few more weeks, but I would rather they have a more gradual introduction into the lower 20s than just out of nowhere. So, even though they'd probably be okay, I'm taking them in just to be safe. Now down here, though, that queen palm, I can't even get it into the house yet, because I need a buddy to help me. So I've just laid it on its side, I'll throw a towel over the top of it, a towel. It'd be a massive towel, uh, a blanket or something over the crown. But it's close to the ground, this warm pavement. It should be just fine, and the water's nice and warm in the pool. I mean, I wouldn't swim in it, but it's like 74 degrees. That's pretty chilly for swimming, but this area should be fairly toasty. I already went through and I cut back the stuff that was in this pot. I found an amaryllis bulb, so that was a nice surprise. I had them as of like several weeks ago. I keep hearing an eagle. We don't have eagles out here. 
Um, do hawks sound like eagles? Does anybody? All right, sorry, ADD. So um, I had my amaryllis bulbs in a very shady, dark spot, kind of like behind my barbecue grill, and I guess I, I missed one. But it, it's doing fine. It had a nice offset on it that snapped off. So I need to get this guy potted up. No rot, nothing. So it was in a nice warm spot near the hot tub. Here's that offshoot. That's a little offset. has some roots on it, so it should be okay. I usually leave them on a little bit longer, but that's all right. I brought in the Mexican fan palm. This guy, I'm surprised it's even alive. I went, it was in a decorative pot around this one, and the pot was completely saturated with water. So it's been sitting in water for a while, because we haven't had a ton of rain. But it's doing okay. It surely, though, 22 degrees, sopping wet, would not have been a good fate for this palm, that's for sure. And then my massive sago palm. This thing... I have a love-hate relationship with the Sago. It's it's huge, which is one of the things I love about it. I've had it for many years. Getting them at this size costs tons of money, so I'm keeping it. It's not something to toss and replace, that's for sure, but it has been a nightmare every year. Almost, well, every two years or three years, I seem to repot it and try to get to stand up straight, so next year it's going somewhere in the full blazing sun. And uh, when I went to pull it out of the ground, it popped right out of the pot, so... Need to repop that. Uh, and these guys are that codex, the trunk on these. This guy has probably 14 inches of trunk on it. That stores a ton of energy. So this will actually be okay for a while as long as temperatures are cool and dry. It'll be okay like this for a little bit. Not for a long time, but, you know, maybe a few weeks. I mean, honestly, probably a few months, but I'm not going to wait that long to repot it. That would not be a good idea. I picked this guy up on clearance at Home Depot, but it was the Home Depot that I have told you guys before. They always have spider mites and mealybugs on their plants, so it's not coming in with the other plants. I'm going to take it and put it in one of my bathrooms and spray it down really heavily because, yeah, see that? Not a good sign. I was thinking that this was some type of philodendron, but looking at the, down here at the base, I don't know, that does look like it might be kind of a woody root. So it could be a philodendron, but I would have to guess this is probably an alocasia or colocasia. I'll look it up, but that might be what this is. And, you know, go figure, there's no tag or label or anything on this guy. Okay, I'm back again. So, I did some digging. So I went onto Costa Farms' website and found this guy right here. This is Philodendrum Super Atom. Actually pretty cool. I don't know why, what am I doing here? I'm screen recording at the same time. Whatever. Super Adam Philodendrum looks like miniature version of its cousin. Salome, which is actually the Bignificutipudum. I don't know how to say it. It has ruffled leaves and a tight, compact shape. Also a slower growing. Super Atom reaches three feet tall and wide over time. Awesome. I was going to say, like, as I was watching it back while I was editing, I was like, that doesn't look like an alakaja or a kalakaja. I could see it better in the video. I also just remembered something else. It's kind of late, but uh, I'm gonna have to make this quick so that it's cold outside. Oh wow, it's really dark. You guys are not gonna have any idea what I'm doing. The lens fogged over. Now, it might be too late, but I just realized I completely forgot to bring my Talansias in, so I need to do that. Oh. Dropped six degrees from having that open for about 45 seconds. So, uh, they actually look okay. You know, these guys, as long as they're not wet, they can take a fair amount of colds. Uh, but, you know, we've had, we've already had one night in the upper 20s. That was about a week ago, and we've had lots of frost, so kind of surprised by that. I'm going to let these warm up for a bit, and then I'll soak them in there, and yeah, they, they should be okay. That should be just fine. Oh, crap. I was editing. Oh, I just messed everything up. Okay, back to the vlog. Okay, so I need to put these mill palms away, and then I'm going to gather my windmill palms and put them up against the house. Yeah. And finally, done with that. I have them up real close to the house in this sort of bay window area. It's kind of a warm pocket. They should be okay tonight. Need to do something with this guy, but eh, I'm over all that. Uh, but I do still have this queen palm here. Oh, man. I'm out of space. Uh-oh. Okay. That'll do for tonight. I need a buddy to move this one to. But uh, it should be alright. I'm not too worried about it. And these cordelins back here. 
I'm going to bring them in, but I'm going to let them take a hard frost. 22 may completely defoliate them. I don't think it'll kill them. These are mealybug magnets, so they're not coming in until I, until I know that they're safe. So they should, and actually, I don't. They might be okay back here. The Chinese fan palm might defoliate in the 22 degrees, but again, should be okay. That'll regrow when it gets warm from the roots. No problem there. All right, so I think all I have left to do now is open up the hoses and shut the water off. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice feeling. This, I know it doesn't really look very good right now, but tomorrow, that's gonna look way worse with these guys. Yeah, that's not gonna be pretty. Definitely not. Oh well. Just how it goes. Ugh. I don't wanna go out there. You wanna go out there, don't you? It's 28 degrees right now. All right, go on. <laughs> oh, we're gonna make this quick. Growth protected by the evergreen, looking all right. It's an Alberta spruce. I think this needs to go next year. It's got a lot of dead stuff in it. That's too bad. Windmill palms look fine as I expected. Even this justicia looks okay. Let's see what happens with those flower buds. I'm surprised by that. I decided not to bring that in because I wasn't particularly blown away by that plant, so no need to take up space. Queen palm. Yep. Looks fine. Looks totally okay. Oleander. Looking fine. Even the bamboo palms next to it look okay. Hibiscus looks sad, but I actually think that this is thirst, not cold. It'll need a couple days to really see how those are doing. These are those ones I got in clearance. There's your standard hibiscus, they take up a lot of space. Those aren't coming in, they're like a dollar a piece. Oh, you're happy to be outside. You're so happy. Tropicanas, yeah, they don't look great. Lower foliage looks better than the top foliage, closer to the ground, warmer. These do well for me, so I'm not worried about those. Even these gingers, the scarlet fevers look okay. Yep, you're fine, you're fine. The foliage here is a little bit more of a matte finish to it not as glossy which can be a sign of cold damage so this particular queen is new for me this year hasn't experienced this kind of cold before so this may end up having more damage when it warms up when it gets around 45 to 50 I'm going to treat the crown with a copper based fungicide just to be safe cordelinis cordelinis cordelins Look fine. Draxanias are toast. That's no surprise there. Bromeliads surprisingly look okay. Chinese fan palm. It looks okay, actually. Looks quite nice. This back area, nice little warm zone. I need to get in here and prune this tree up, though, because it's blocking all the sun from my garden window, and I might talk about that in a minute. We'll see. But the succulents that are in there are starting to take off. They need more sun, so I have to move those. I don't feel like doing, so, you know, because of space. Yeah, okay. Oh, you look fine, though. Not, yeah, they, they don't look too good. I'm surprised there's even any green left on them. Oh, and if you're wondering why I bought all this mulch and didn't throw it down yet, it's because before I can do that, I have to get all the maple leaves up. I don't want any maple or oak leaves down underneath the mulch. It mats together, and it creates this, like, wet blanket kind of effect on top of everything. And it leads to rotting, and it makes things colder than it needs to be, so I'm going to wait until I can get all these leaves up, which I can probably pull off next week. No big deal. What I'm actually really curious about, because this is kind of what I expected. Things are nowhere near as damaged as I was worried they would be. I mean, look at the flowers on this Eucamus. There's... that, that stock is totally fine still. <laughs> this went into bloom for me in July. I cannot believe... and in the video... When I was talking about it, I was like, hey, you know, this will probably be done by, what did I say, August or September? Here we are, November. Still, still at it. Not looking great, because this area needs more sun. This tree, this magnolia needs to be pruned. But uh, I want to see how the annuals are doing in the front yard. I bet those are toast. Saracenias are doing all right. I moved them down a little lower to the ground last night. Sempervivums are fine. Hardy cactus. Looking okay. Now these bananas right up against the house, they look pretty good, don't they? What a difference being near the house makes. There's a little baby sable palm, sable palmetto down there. That's been one of the hardiest palms I've ever had. I don't protect it. 
it hasn't grown much. I've had it for like seven years. It hasn't done much, but they grow like snails. This planter looks all right. Vinkas hanging in there. So are the snapdragons. Even some of those petunias. Those are the uh, uh, Super Tunia Vista bubblegums. They look all right. Yeah, but let's go see the front. Okay, I'm not going out there. I'm too cold. Okay, maybe I will. I think I have to. All right. Kind of cold over there. This guy looks okay, though. Impatience are kind of sad, but I'm really shocked by how well this, this fuchsia is doing. That's pretty cool. I might have to bring that in and keep it going. Yeah, those, they're not looking great. These are about ready to move. These go to the backyard during the winter time. But, uh, yeah, these impatience. Time to cut those back. <laughs> they're not looking good. All right, so there we go. We've seen the cold damage. Uh, like I said, when things warm up, I might go ahead and give the crowns of the queen palms a light spray with some copper-based fungicide. So I don't really think they need it. Not quite yet. But I am going to go ahead and wrap this up. This video is getting long. I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share. All these things help me a lot. Especially the, the commenting doesn't really help me. It's just fun. I like talking to everybody. You can follow me on all my social medias. They're up on my YouTube page, but it's uh, Snapchat, Trop plant party instagram tropical plant party and twitter tropical plant jc oh my gosh it's so cold i gotta go okay everybody keep on growing Bye bye